Aligning values, you know, with our clients is our number one goal because if they don't believe in what we do, well, then it's not going to work. One of the things that we do when we say in Bryn Take School is um, second best isn't good enough. The pupils have always got to have the best. And now it's in terms of what the site looks like, yeah. what, what the whole of the site looks like. So you decided to choose us? So we have seen a massive difference, but it's, a, it's actually what you brought in, Rachel, is, is a different product altogether. Yeah. Hi, I'm Rachel Flanagan and welcome to The Mopper. So I'm here today with Ryan Davis, the head teacher for Brintig School. Hello, Ryan. Hi, Rachel. Um, so we've been in the school now for the last couple of months and um, why did you start looking for a new cleaning and FM provider for the school? Well, it, it's a long story, Rachel. Um, I've been here for five years and when I started at Brintig, um, we looked at all aspects of our provision. And of course, in a school, you'd start with learning and teaching yeah. and, and improve that. But quite quickly, we realised that what we need to do in Brintake is come up with a really accurate vision and um, a really accurate set of values that all of, the, all of the school community could buy into. So it took us five years to arrive at those. And um, our, our values in Brintake School, com uh, community, respect, independence and kindness, um, they are really important to everything that we do. Yeah. And um, one of the things that we felt that um, what we were doing in the past um, in terms of our cleaning and our facilities management in school, it wasn't really showing the respect to the pupils that we'd expected back from them. Mm. And so, I, I, you know, we're talking about standards of cleaning and so on. Um, and what we wanted was um, a, a firm to come in and help us to deliver this outstanding level of uh, cleaning that we felt would mirror what our values are in our school. Brilliant. So you decided to choose us? Yeah, it was, um, well, as you know, we had many, many discussions about it. And um, I was aware of Mrs. Bouquet um, from my time in Swansea. And, um, you know, you were probably, you know, one of the first people that we contacted. And it was a lengthy process, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, where, um, you know, um, obviously the governors are involved, the whole of the school community were involved, and that was really important, and sharing our, our plans with them. Um, but yeah, after lots of discussions and lots of um, feedback and um, input from your, you, yourself and your colleagues, yeah, we decided to go with Mrs. Bouquet. And I think, I think like what we've found as well, you know, is it's been actually a really inspirational journey mm. because the education sector is tough, isn't it? It's a tough industry to get in with, mm. especially if you're a private company as we are. But I think for you, what I saw in you is like that absolute like belief and that drive to mm. see it through to the very end mm. to make sure the cleanliness of the school was up there with your standards that you set on other levels in the school. Yeah. And for me, that was really inspiring because I've dealt with the education sector before when you get halfway and then you know there's another hurdle and then there's another hurdle and then it's put on the back burner mm. but for you you kept going you know mm. and and because it did take us probably nearly 12 months didn't it really to get to the point it did and it was tough but um one of the things that we do when we say in Brintake school is um, second best isn't good enough. The pupils have always got to have the best and yeah. that is in the classroom, that is in the in the canteen at lunchtime and now it's in terms of what the, what the site looks like, yeah. what, what the whole of the site looks like and it would have been quite easy not to make that change as well yeah. um, but what we saw was when we had the information from yourselves, from Mrs Bouquet, um, that kind of linked in with our vision for the school. We yeah. could see that what we are trying to do for every single pupil and indeed member of staff in the school, yeah. um, we felt that was mirrored in what you were offering as a product as well. Yeah, I mean, aligning values, mm. you know, with our clients is our number one goal because if they don't believe in what we do and mm. the difference that we want to make in the cleaning sector as well, mm. then it's not going to work or it's going to only work short term, not long term. Um, so how have you found the, the last couple of months? Because I've walked into the school today 
And the first thing that I I could feel it was mm. cleaner. Mm. You know, it's just that that feeling of cleanliness as well. But how have you found these last couple of months? We felt that, um, well, we hoped that things were going to change from the beginning of September. Um, and indeed they have, um, but it's taken our breath away really um, because it's, it's not just about the cleanliness, mm. Look, that's why you're here. Yeah. It's, it's the impact it's making in terms of the way that everyone is thinking yeah. about the school yeah. Um, and looking after their school because, yeah. you know, as far as the pupils and the staff are concerned, they seem to be buying into it as well. And very slowly, we see um, the input that Mrs. Bouquet um, is having an impact on our thinking and our culture. Yeah. So whereas in the past, perhaps pupils um, would say, well, it's okay to drop that litter on the floor or whatever and not do anything about it. Um, because of the high profile of Mrs. Bouquet in school and because of what they're seeing is happening, yeah. they feel they, they're adopting a more responsible attitude to things like that as well. Mm -hmm. So it's been quite breathtaking. So we have seen a massive difference, of course, in standards of cleanliness. Um, but it's, a, it's actually what you brought in, Rachel, is, is a different product altogether yeah. because... In, in the past, we had some very, very hard working and, and loyal uh, cleaning staff who um, were doing a job for us. Um, but you're doing that and a whole lot more. Yeah. And the, the standards in terms of cleanliness are, are, are quite, quite different. Um, first of all, thank you for that, because we, we haven't rehearsed this. This is the first time we're sitting down. So it's lovely to do that. I mean, for me, it... it you know, it is a, it's sometimes a challenge to say we run a cleaning business, mm. you know, and for people to really understand what the actual outputs can be, um, mm. so, you know, and, and for you to see those differences so quickly as well. Mm. Um, you know, improving culture is huge for us, you know, high performing environments are not dirty, are they? They're clean. Mm. And that then is that ripple effect that goes around. Mm. So it's fantastic to hear that. Mm. Um, and I think for us as well, you know, really engaging with the pupils here mm. is, is our next move. And I think it's already starting mm. by the sounds of it. Mm. But, you know, running the internal marketing campaigns, really trying, you know, to really up level, like, and give them their own, the ownership of looking mm. after their rooms and, you know, the areas that they're in. So they feel really proud to be here. So, you know, that's great to hear that it's happening. I mean, I've walked into the site today and I could feel it. Mm. I, you know, it's got a it's got a different buzz about mm. it, isn't it? Yeah, you know? I think that's what I mean about it, it affecting culture as well. And when you look at what we agreed, uh, yeah. you know, in terms of the contract between Brintake School and Mrs. Bouquet, it doesn't talk about, you know, impacting on the culture or whatever, but it does. Yeah. And because everyone is thinking about it, they're seeing uh, Mrs. Bouquet uh, colleagues walking around school with their Mrs. Bouquet uniform yeah. on. Yeah. Um, but those pupils know that when when they walk into the toilet or when they walk into the canteen um, it's going to be clean and it's going to be for them a lot of our pupils they feel that it's a safer place so they, they, they feel that they can walk in to for example the toilet areas in school and feel comfortable with it um, and what I've absolutely loved you is you have just given us you know a fresh piece of paper for mm. us to do what we are absolutely best at you know and you say well you're the experts you create the shift patterns you do what you think is best and you know that that's been part of that inspiration for me because you know it's a, it's a partnership isn't it when you change a, a cleaning provider but for me you know you bought in to all the new innovation that we wanted to do and you know that took time didn't it as well and well, obviously we had to demonstrate it to you because it's hard just to see it on a piece of paper. So how have you found even that side of that innovation piece yeah. here? You know, I think you're right. I mean, I, I wouldn't expect you to come in and be the expert in learning and teaching. I mean, that that's what I'm trained to do. And when we first started our conversation, some of the things that you were saying um, about your industry, um, I'd, I'd never experienced before and, and it was all new to me. And yeah, you're quite right. I said, right, you're the experts. It's over to you. Mm -hmm. You come up with the the plan for us. So yes, we gave you a blank sheet of paper because um, we didn't want to interfere and try to direct you in any way because 
you're the experts and um, you brought um, well a new way of working as far as um, managing the facility in school and cleaning it um, good example is the fact that we now have um, a team of daytime cleaners and we didn't have those before um, and what, what we are seeing um, and it's not just me as the head teacher yeah. it's every single pupil yeah. and parents who are coming yeah. in to visit us they're seeing cleaners around the school and they're thinking yeah the standards have, have improved significantly and that for me is is massive because um the old system would be where something would happen and we'd have to wait a few hours for it to be sorted out at the end of the day when the cleaning team arrived yeah things things are sorted almost immediately yeah. because you part of the team isn't it yeah as well. but, but it's about saying that you know again we're not accepting second best this school has got to look absolutely yeah. perfect for every single pupil and member of staff in there yeah. and that is going to impact positively on our standards in terms yeah. of learning and teaching as yeah. well and you are right it it has got that feeling now a, a positive feeling mm. of, you know we're all working together and um, it's a good place to be and it it's it's and I bet Mrs. Bouquet is very much part of that yeah. movement as well. Yeah, yeah. And we put in the new kit, haven't we? Mm. And how's that gone? How's that gone down? Is in you know for for well, everyone here. Well, as as you know, I quite like the test drive of the <laughs> <laughs> of the uh, what do they call it the scrubber or whatever yeah. that uh, you can drive around the school and, <laughs> and it's a large site as you know. So I'm thinking of using that to do my sort of duty around school yeah. and drive around there and wave to all of the pupils as We've I go got past. Got a caption of this now. Have <laughs> you on it? Oh yeah. Yeah. But it's it's um, you know again comparing it to what we had in the past as i said earlier on you've got you ha we had a team of incredibly hard working cleaners yeah. Yeah. but now we are using equipment that makes a lot of sense mm. in terms of cleanliness mm. and uh, in terms of ease of use for the yeah. cleaning staff as well and they're able to clean to a much higher standard so we've got um, IMOPs yeah. um, that um, uh, you know are used throughout the day yeah. you're walking down corridors and you, you can yeah. actually you can physically see the difference yeah. and yeah. I know the pupils can as yeah. well and I have noticed and you you remember this Rachel when you first came here you would see litter on the corridors yeah and you don't see that yeah. anymore and it's almost as if because this corridor is so clean yeah and you can see yeah. the cleaners walking around that doesn't happen anymore yeah. and we haven't got signs that saying do not put litter on the mm -hmm. floor anymore mm -hmm. it's just happened because of the the, what you were brought to it yeah. yeah so we put in you know we put in uh, uh, that ride on scrubber mm. dryer didn't we that was you know big investment for mm. the school and um, for obviously yourselves, but I think even that alone, I mean, it's added so much value because now we're cleaning externally, the parents are coming here. I mean, that is a significant change compared to maybe before with a little brush and, and you know, that yeah. sort of side. Yeah, with the equipment um, the cleaning staff had before, you really you couldn't expect them to sort of clean in the sort of deep way that you do now. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, you're right in terms of the investment. It is a significant investment. Um, but what we're thinking is um, we're going to benefit from mm. that outlay um, in the medium to long term. When you, you know, if you just look at, um, and we've had a conversation about how cleanliness of buildings could affect positively in terms of uh, uh, staff health and yeah. whatever. So if we gain in terms of the, the reducing uh, staff absences in school because yeah. the working environment is much cleaner. Yeah that would be fantastic for the school and of course more importantly if it's cleaner for the pupils and they are mm. attending regularly because of that that's even better again isn't yeah, it definitely. so yeah we, we 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 have invested we've taken your advice and and i'm bought into the suggestions you come with so there's lots of new things in school that i am not a clue how half of them work but <laughs> the the ride on machine the eye mops yeah. um we've so got the on. backpack so mm. when we first came in was an it you know there was lots and lots of mops here mm. um you know not not necessarily the color coding sort of side for the clods as well so we put all of that in place microfiber clods um flat mop systems as well but what we've done is we've invested in, you know, the eye mops and the backpacks because obviously, especially more towards the end of the day, when chairs are up, we can just go straight under rather than the tub back and, you know, leads and things and they're all, yeah. you know, so that's improved productivity as well as visually 
if you've got pupils and parents coming in at, and obviously the teachers, mm. it shows a significant change is happening. Mm, absolutely, and the pupils love the fact they got a team of Ghostbusters in <laughs> school. Uh, uh, but it's it, you're right though; it's these new innovations are making it much better yeah. for all all of the colleagues from Mrs. Bouquet to to actually do a good job for us, uh, and and it is making a massive difference. And they just didn't have that before. Um, and again, as I keep saying, we have noticed the massive difference yeah. in school. Well, you never know now. Next goal is the six formers working mm. for us. Mm. You know, that would be amazing. Cleaning and helping and working with us, giving yeah. back then, you know, in that way. Because I think they, you know, the pupils here now, they respect us. Mm. They respect the school more. Mm. I, you know, I can I can feel that. Mm. And then, um, yeah, like I said, it's that, it's that exciting buzz, isn't it? Yeah, to think about the sixth form being part of the Mrs. Bouquet team would be really exciting because if you go back to our values, yeah. like you mentioned, respect there. Yeah. But of course, community is another one of our yeah. values. And, and to build up that sense of community within the school by them, you know, yeah. being part of the Mrs. Bouquet yeah. team would be absolutely amazing. Yeah. But another thing, I, do an innovation day for them. Yeah, another thing I know that yeah, I like those innovation days. <laughs> but the another thing I know this is you know when you actually provide in this equipment to the staff. Um, it, it, you talk about developing culture, but they feel better about yeah, things as well. So if you give someone the best equipment, they're going to respond more positively then. Yeah. And you do think that perhaps we are getting a better quality service yeah. because of that. They're more engaged mm. and, you know, well, it's, you know, I always sort of say to the team, you know, we've got to be different, mm. but we've also got to use the best kit, the mm. best technology, because it's like giving someone in like an office world, a, you know, a third second hand laptop and it shuts down every now and again. And that's so frustrating rather than having new kit you feel so more engaged so more connected to doing a really good job mm. it's exactly the same in the cleaning sector and, and the little things do matter don't they i went yeah. into the staff toilets in um humanities earlier on today and you've got that base of you for all of the um chemicals that you yeah. use yeah. and they're all labeled up and you can see how the cleaning staff use them but if you're a normal member of staff walking in there a member of teaching staff you just read and you think oh right that's used for yeah. all surfaces or whatever yeah. And it just makes you feel better because it looks organised yeah. and it looks like, um, again, the quality of the service is yeah. so much better. Yeah, and behind behind the, the cleaning cupboard as well, mm. you know, that is, you know, mm. those those products are environmentally friendly. They've mm. got a fantastic um, learning platform behind mm. that as well. It's all on an app. So we've thought of all of that mm. as well as just how it's used maybe to just the customers. We're, we're making yeah. sure if, you know, we, can, we can roll it out behind the scenes. Well, if you provide the best, um, then I think people respond in that positive way, don't they? Now, when we first met, I was talking to you about, um, I sound like I'm an expert in toilets, don't I? But, <laughs> you are uh, I am. But, uh, <laughs> we were talking about the damage that we were getting in our toilets and whatever yeah. and you came along and you said right we are going to completely um replace all of your um you know your hand towels your consumable yeah, items expenses. in there and I, I i've got to be honest with you rachel <laughs> before we came back in september i was so worried about that yeah, yeah. because um we would we used to get maybe one or two um toilet roll holders broken off every single day mm. and we haven't had one Wow. since september and that's the hand towels toilet roll holders and whatever and that again mm -hmm. sounds like a small thing but it's all about that yeah. developing that culture where we care we care yeah. about you yeah. um we want you to have the best yeah. and then suddenly the the, yeah. the pupils respond in, yeah. in, in a much more positive way yeah i mean this is really powerful now because mm. this is a real mindset shift that's going mm. on here isn't it yeah i think even um you know some of the, you know, the mrs bouquet colleagues said you know we expected to have to go around and mm. replace um, some of the toilet roll holders in the first week and you know touch wood we haven't yeah. as yet but you know we're now in week five yeah. and n nothing has happened at all yeah. and it, it does tell you a lot that does yeah. again it sounds like a small thing but anyone who uh, works in this environment in a school will know yeah. that is absolutely massive yeah yeah that's really mm. good to know mm. so i think we've talked a lot that during the pandemic a light was shone on the cleaning industry, 
probably, if we're totally honest, cleaning doesn't come to boardroom tables a lot. Um, mm. But throughout those three years, it did. And it shone a light on the industry that was needed, to be honest. So what sort of, you know, what sort of value have we added here mm. for you since since the pandemic? And what have you learned from the pandemic as well? Yeah, Rachel, it's a, it's, a, it's a different product. And you're right, um, the, the whole of the pandemic, it, it, we had to stop and think about the way that we were managing the school site in terms of cleanliness. And we tried to implement new systems, but they weren't um, really uh, working for us as a school. Um, and so what it did push us in a very positive way. If anything positive has come out of the pandemic, we did start to think about you know, what we need as a school to ensure mm. that wherever you go in the school, the school is clean, it's hygienic, and um, it is at that high standard that we've talked about so yeah. much today. Yeah. And that then sort of almost pushed us as, you know, as the head teacher and the governing body to have the, the discussions with you to see what you could offer us. And quite quickly we realized that what you could offer us was almost a different product um, to what we currently or we had at the time yeah which um, but it, it was greatly enhanced and what it has meant is you know working with you um, obviously um, we, we we've resourced it but the resources that we've invested in our relationship with mrs bouquet we think are going to significantly benefit the school mm. to the point where it's going to become in the perhaps the medium term mm. uh, to be very very cost effective yeah. for us as well in terms of other savings in mm. the school mm. yeah so i'll turn the tables on you now rachel um, i'm looking forward to this um, <laughs> Your so, now. so um you know Obviously, I, I know that you've worked in schools before, um, but why Bryn Take School and, and, and what is it that you think? Because it, to be fair to you and the team, um, I, I know um, that you've invested a significant amount of time mm. to make this work as well. So what is it that you see yourselves as, as, as a business getting out of Bryn Take School and our relationship? So um, I am really passionate about the education sector. I mean, I have been visiting high schools and comprehensive schools and, you know, uh, six forms for probably the last eight to 10 years. And behind the scenes, you know, we've discussed it, it's pretty shocking. On average, comprehensive schools pay, you know, 150, 200,000 plus per annum. Um, you know, I would challenge if they're even getting 50% of that value as a, as a return. As soon as you open the hood, you find all these, you know, ghosts that you don't want to see. But it's all about the leadership of the school. Can they really commit to with us as a partnership to drive the change that it truly needs to do in the cleaning and the education sector? So for us, we do get a lot of inquiries for, you know, schools. And the first thing we'll ask is, you know, who's who's there at the minute? Um, how long have you had them for? Um, who's part of the leadership team? Just to really understand, you know, are they going to waste time with us? How much are they really committed? And I think from when we came in and we had our initial meeting, for me, it was seeing your eyes, like, you know, light up going, oh, she's talking my language. And I could see there was a connection there that we could really make a difference here. So we knew that the school standards could be raised. We knew that, we both knew that, but it was more about the how, how we're gonna really shift forward to that as the school. And I knew you guys were committed because I obviously asked you key questions as well. Then we kept on having a couple of meetings and a big thing about us is, is having fun. You know, like we spend so much time in work. We've got to have fun. You've got to get on with your clients. And I could see myself and obviously the team that we had very similar values, but also we had a laugh, we had a giggle as well. And that was really important because, you know, it is a partnership to change and improve the culture of, a, of the school. We've got to do it together. 
Um, and, you know, in fairness, you went all in. There is not many heads, to be honest, that has gone this far. Um, usually it's 50% down the line and then they go, oof, you know, it was a bit too much now. Or they get challenges from, you know, certain, certain areas and then they and they back off and they just do more of the same. The stuff that was done in the 80s, to be honest. Mm. So that that's why we wanted to work with you. And I'm really excited for what, you know, we're just scratching the surface in our world here, what more we can do that, going forward. That, that, that's why I'm going to ask you finally is, um, one of the things that you brought to the table was, you know, you talk about innovation, you talk about the fact that you 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 travel around around Europe looking for the next big thing as far as your industry is concerned. So in five years' time, what will cleaning look like in Brintake School? Wow, yeah, well, you'll definitely probably have more robotics here. Um, I think um, probably the the technology, um, we want to put in an app for our customers as well. So you'll be interacting and engaging with us, maybe offline as well. So that that's part of, of um, our next steps as well. But certainly for us, innovation is on our KPIs, is on our agendas when, when we meet with you on a monthly and a quarterly basis. So it's, yeah, who knows, you'll be coming out to Amsterdam as well next time. That's what I'm hinting at. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rachel, so you know, we're both in sort of positions at the top of our structure. Um, what do you think makes a good leader? Um, oof, yeah, so being a good leader for me, what, what makes it is really seeing like the best in someone where maybe they don't see it in themselves. Um, and I actually experienced this when I was in school. I was inspired in college by listening to somebody's story about entrepreneurship. And later on, I was probably at the time the only person in that class to go out there. But I remember him saying, if he can inspire one person in this room, then his job is done. And he did that to me. So for me, it's about, you know, inspiring our next leaders and maybe they want to be a manager, but they don't have that belief in themselves. And that's mm. what I think is, is a good leader. leader. Mm. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. I think um, for me, one of the key traits has to be passion and you've got to be passionate about what you've got to love what you do and i and we've got an open evening in school tomorrow evening and i'll be talking to your six parents or hopefully prospective parents and uh, um and, and i'll tell them that i've got the best job in the world although you probably say you've got the best job in the world <laughs> but i do i truthfully believe that but i think a good leader has to communicate that passion mm. and as part of that passion you then want to do the best for every single person that you come in contact with mm. and i think that is really why we've ended up working yeah. closely with you thank you ryan for today i have learned even more about the business so thank you so much about uh, for that yeah it's been a pleasure rachel thanks for listening to the mop up today and if you want to hear more subscribe <laughs>